right in front of me because you go over a ridge and there was an obstacle. So it was a challenge driving this rover. We had reverse gear, but uh, they didn't give us a rear view mirror. So you flip a hand, or flip a switch, push forward, and you went backwards with the car, but we never used it because we didn't know, we didn't want to back into something and damage the car. So we did, generally did U-turns, and we made U-turns and went back wherever we wanted to go. But if that didn't work, we couldn't do a U-turn. John, I got on my side, John got on the other side, and we just picked it up and turned it around. The car weighed uh, 80 pounds up on the moon. So, I mean, you felt like Superman up on the moon. You could pick up your car, you know. You didn't like your parking place, just go pick up your car and take it somewhere else. Uh, the, the, you could, as you stood on the moon, you could look out and you could see this deep, the, the very sharp horizon. And it was, while we were on the moon, it was always daylight. A day from sunrise to sunset on the moon is two weeks. So it was always daylight during the 72 hours we were there. And you could look up into the sky and the sky was just black. It's very jet black. And, and to see the earth, I had to rock my suit back and forth like this. And I looked right back and right over my head was the earth about 240,000 miles away. It, when I looked up, I saw a half earth. When you looked up to the moon, you would have seen a half moon. And so the moon was moving towards the full phase. The Earth was going towards the new phase. So by the time we got back to Earth, all you could see was just a little thin sliver of, of blue, blue and white. Uh, and the moon was full. Uh, so it was spectacular being there. We landed, when we landed, the, the temperature of the surface of the moon was about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when we left, it was 235 degrees, and our suits would go to about 250, so we had to be off by the time the temperature got to 250 degrees on the lunar surface. We didn't, as I said, we didn't want to come home. Uh, we had such a great time. We collected 200 plus pounds of rocks, mostly igneous and breccias. If you're a geologist, you know what that is. Uh, and uh, so we had a great time, uh, had fun the whole time we were there. John was a great commander. Uh, we had a great sense of humor. Uh, and if you listen to the transcripts, uh, we were just bubbling with enthusiasm and excitement the whole time. We were on the moon for 72 hours, so we just divided it up into three 24-hour periods. And we have a rest period where we take off our suits, we put up some little hammocks in the spacecraft, and take a rest. Uh, then we'd get up, we'd eat a meal, put on our suits, which took three hours to get all checked out, uh, and then we'd open the door and then climb out. The maximum we were outside was seven hours and 30 minutes uh, on our first excursion. And uh, then we'd climb back inside, close the door, take off our suits, get everything ready to go. And we didn't think about much about this, but every time we climb back inside, we bring this massive amount of moon dust in with us. And so the floor of the lunar module was covered with moon dust. Uh, and uh, so we didn't think much of that until we got back into orbit. And when we got back into orbit, zero gravity, all this moon dust covers, I mean, it's just like a big fog of moon dust inside the spacecraft. So we were concerned it was going to plug up our environmental control system, so we didn't take off our helmets and stuff. So we stayed what we call buttoned up in our suits. So we, an hour later, we docked up with Mattingly in the command ship, and, and we join up and lock up together. So he starts to take out all the stuff in between the spacecraft, the, the hatch, the tunnel, and, uh, and all like that. And so he got everything out, and he opened the hatch, and he looked in, and he saw this moon dust. He says, you're not coming in here looking like that. And he closed the hatch. He wouldn't let us get in. Uh, and uh, so about five minutes later, he opens the hatch again, and in floats this little handheld dust devil vacuum cleaner. So we vacuumed up the moon dust uh, in the spacecraft. And uh, so we knocked on the hatch, said, OK, Ken, we're clean. And so he let us open the door and let us get back in. So uh, we left our car on the moon, 
So if you want an $8 million car with a dead battery, I, I know exactly where ours is, and so you're welcome to go pick it up if you like. Transportation's on your own uh, uh, chart, on your own product credit card. Well, on the way home, we had this spacewalk, uh, and uh, on the second day of the mission, this is the last story I'll tell, on the second day of the mission, uh, we had uh, Mattingly uh, let, lost his wedding ring, and it was, he'd taken it off to wash his hands, and since we didn't have any showers, uh, we used kind of stuff like just towels and stuff. So it floated off uh, and uh, was in there somewhere. Now this is seven days later, we're on our way back, and we can't see, I mean, he can't, uh, uh, he's still looking. So we, we open the door, he gets out, I get out, and we're outside about an hour. I come back inside and, uh, uh, and watching him, now he's 10 feet away working on an experiment with his back to us. We're traveling through space about 4,000 miles an hour now, and all of a sudden I look over and there's his wedding ring floating out the door. Uh, just moving very slow. Well, I was wedged in and I reached for it and I missed it and it floated outside, well lost in space. Well, it took about three minutes, but it floated out and hit him on the back of the head. Now it's a round helmet, a round ring, and when it hit, I was thinking, well, it's gonna hit and go bounce off somewhere. But what happened when it hit, it took a 180 degree bounce and started back towards the hatch. Five minutes later, it floated back inside and I grabbed it. <coughs> so we saved his lunar uh, his rain. The next day, we hit the Earth's atmosphere. And last time I looked at the computer, uh, we were going through uh, 38,800 feet per second, uh, which was uh, 26,000 miles an hour plus. But the spacecraft did a great job. We landed in the Pacific Ocean, a mission complete. Apollo was a very great success. It was a great opportunity to demonstrate teamwork, all that's good in America, all the technology of America, put us in first place technologically and in the prestige in the eyes of the world. And that was the benefit of Apollo. I mean, Teflon and all these other stuff, things came from, uh, from the space age technology. But uh, the important part was what it did for us in the eyes of the world. Everybody looked to America as a technological leader. And that's why it's important that we continue to press on into space and to keep going. Uh, unfortunately, next year is the last shuttle mission, and after that, we gotta pay the Russians to put us in space, which I think is a disgrace. And uh, we need a new program to follow on uh, with shuttle, uh, the space shuttle. Well, an idea of the, of the benefits of technology, I bought a digital camera the other day, and the little card that went in that digital camera had eight gigabytes of memory. Now that's, I don't know, how, that, that's a lot. And I started figuring that up, and that little card, which is about the size of a postage stamp, has 100,000 times the memory of our Apollo computer. Can you imagine all of that within 30-something years of, of uh, activity? Well, I, uh, my wife and I have written a book called Moonwalker uh, that we're going to have for sale, and we'll be back at the table on the left here. Uh, and if you want a copy, uh, I'd be happy to autograph it for you. When you if you like, we have some DVDs. Uh, that's called Moonwalker, uh, and also Walker on the Moon, Walker the Sun, which is half of our Christian story, which happened later on. But it's anyway, it's a part of our life. And we'll have those for sale uh, back in, uh, about past this open door back here on the left. So uh, thanks a lot. I want to thank the committee and uh, especially Alton uh, for inviting me to be in here and having a, such a great time. It's uh, wonderful to be a part of this great event, raise money for some great causes, a scholarship for the kids. And so God bless you all, and thank you very much for giving me a chance to listen. Thank you so much, Charlie. We appreciate it. I got to hear more today than I learned yesterday.
fine American astronaut, Charlie Duke. We appreciate you being here. He'll be over there near that tree that you can see there, and he'll do book signing, autographs, pose for pictures, whatever you'd like. 